the numbers are in. And once again in 2012, the world's third largest religion was Give Me a Fucking Break. In the recent Pew survey on the global religious landscape, roughly one person in six identified with no religion at all, which puts the worldwide number of non-religious at well over a billion. Numbers in the U.S. are actually significantly better than the worldwide average, believe it or not. About one-fifth of Americans now claim no religion, and that's an increase of 25% over the last five years, and it's up from basically zero when they introduced color TV. Now, as bad as all this looks for the imaginary friends camp, it's actually much worse. When you break down the demographics, the non-believers are more plentiful the younger you go, with nearly a third of Americans between 18 and 29 having kicked the habit habit. Numbers are probably even higher with the under-18 category. Now add to that the fact that religious people have a head start on senility, and you can see where this is going. And make no mistake, the divinosaurs have seen it too. Their pathetic attempts to rationalize away the preface to their own obituary are clogging the blogosphere like digital cholesterol. They point to signs in some polls, but not others, that show that the rise in irreligion might be leveling off. They go all Orwellian and try to make no religion somehow mean still pretty religious, though. They rant, they rave, and they try desperately to maintain some modicum of relevance in a world that's already been to the heavens and brought back pictures. But to be fair, I've seen a few atheists that have misrepresented these data as well, so let's be clear on exactly what the numbers do and don't say. Now let's jump to this uh, recent Gallup poll. They asked respondents, what is your religious preference, and they offered these choices. Protestant, Roman Catholic, Mormon, Jewish, Muslim, another religion, or no religion. When faced with that question in 2012, 17.8% of people answered no religion or refused to answer. Uh, according to the Pew study that I referenced earlier, we're actually doing better with up to 20% answering no religion. Now, the current media narrative on the nuns is that these are people who aren't atheists, but rather they're seekers, they're doubters, they're temporary apostates. But the fact remains that they answered no religion, and the effective definition of atheist is person with no religion. Now, sure, these numbers include agnostics, and they include the people that say they're spiritual and then can't say exactly what the fuck that means. And In fact, only about 2% of people are actually willing to identify themselves as atheists. But, of course, a lot of these noncommittal folks are dictionary atheists. They're people like Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's real quick to say that he's not an atheist, but he also doesn't remotely believe in God or a spirit or any of those things that a person needs to believe in to not be an atheist. A lot of these people are atheists that just don't want to get lumped in with assholes like me. Still others are atheists who have been convinced that there's some intellectual nobility in riding the fence. They think that agnosticism is the logical default position when it comes to God, but look, I'm not willing to say with absolute Gnostic certainty that I'm not going to get raped by Bigfoot tonight, so maybe in a technical sort of way I'm agnostic about it, but I'm certainly not going to live my life with non-consensual Sasquatch sodomy as even the remotest of concerns, so does that make me a Bigfoot rape agnostic or a Bigfoot rape atheist? And when the chips are down, is there any difference? But as much as we make in the godless community about this technical difference between agnostics and atheists, that's not really where the nomenclature becomes a problem. I call this the agnostic gambit. A lot of these people are, are saying, basically, I'm an atheist as long as it doesn't piss anybody off. I'm an atheist, but I don't want to argue about it. I'm an atheist as long as it doesn't interfere with my chances of getting hired slash promoted slash laid. Now, I understand where all that comes from, but it has to change. When I look at this 18% of non-religious, non-atheist respondents, I see opportunity. I see the target market for our evangelism. I see a group of people who are ready to have the conversation, ready to embrace the certainty, ready to hear exactly what it is that we have to say. We may only be 2%, but keep in mind that that's still 6 million people. Now, you're never going to convert a devout 45-year-old evangelical with a logical discussion, but a 20-something wavering skeptic is ripe for reason. We shouldn't be ashamed to evangelize. We shouldn't hesitate to defend ours as the only logically coherent position. I'm not suggesting that you go out, knock on doors, hand out blank pamphlets, and ask people, are you prepared for the eventuality that you just die? Although, incidentally, if you do, please send me the YouTube link. But what I am suggesting is that the next time you hear somebody say that they're spiritual or agnostic or whatever, don't be afraid to put on your best salesman smile and give them the pitch for atheism. There's a marketplace out there where people are selling truth every day. I'm just saying that I think the people who are actually telling the truth should get in on it.